Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. Today we were working on a 2012 Toyota RAV4. This will cover years from 2009 to 2018. Uh, this vehicle has a two ARFE inline four cylinder engine. We're gonna be doing the spark plugs on it. Do is pull this cover off. Just uh, some clips hold it in. Pull that off, there are your coil packs. You have four of them underneath the coil packs are your spark plugs. So we need to get these clips off, boom, 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 boom. Four 10 millimeter bolts hold it on. Once we get those off, we can twist the uh, coil pack and break it free. And then we'll go down there and grab the, uh, grab the spark plug itself. Now always, 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 always go with the quality spark plug, be that Denso or NGK. Don't use like a German plug, like a Bosch plug on a Japanese car. It just doesn't make sense. And I've heard all kinds of horror stories about it when you do this. Let's pull these plugs off and then we'll get the coil packs out and free. This job is not hard at all. Not hard at all. You have a little tab right here. Go ahead, just push that tab in at the same time you're pushing out. Just kind of wiggle it. On older models, these tabs have been known to break. That one didn't break. There we go. Boom. This one broke. This is the VVT solenoid, so I'm actually gonna pull this, get this connector out of the way as well. Just give me a little bit more room. Okay, now I'll go in there, 10 millimeter. If you have an electric ratchet, it'll be a lot quicker, but you can always use your handy dandy, trusty uh, ratchet as well. Let's break them free. They're not even on there all that tight. I like to show you that you guys can just use common tools. You don't need fancy air tools or electric tools to do these jobs. I also know a lot of you guys are new to my channel. So if you can, it really helps me out. If you can subscribe, I can see the analytics and I'll get a lot of new people come and watch my videos. Not a lot of subscribers. So if you are new, it'd really help me out. If you could go ahead and hit that, hit that subscribe button. Just putting the coil packs up on the fender. Just wiggle the coil a little bit and it'll come up and out. Okay, and I'm gonna look down there, see if I see any oil. No, it's all free and clear. So if you did see oil down there, it means one of your uh, spark plug tube seals is broken, but it's all good. Let me take you down there, let me show you real quick. Clear. Clear. Clear and clear so sometimes those fill up with oil and the cause of that is a uh, bad spark plug tube seal if we do the valve cover gas we'll be changing those out as well they sit right there that's it right there 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 and there so let's get the spark plugs out got a six inch extension we use a 5 8 spark plug socket okay get the two in drop it on down there make sure it seats correctly righty tighty lefty loosey Always do this when the engine is cold. Don't do this when the engine's hot. Now the 5 8 spark plug socket I'm using is a magnetic spark plug socket. So it means that it captures the spark plug as, uh, as you pull it up and out. That way you don't have to come back down with like a magnetic pickup tool and grab, uh, grab the spark plug. I'll put links in the description below of all the tools that I use in this video. Plus some I recommend if you guys do a lot, a lot of work on cars. There we go. So there it is. There's a the spark plug. Iridium Denzos. They don't look that bad. Smell kind of like turpentine. Old gas. Where this car sat for a while. You can see it's not black. It's it's color it should be. Looks like it's been a while since they've been changed. So let's pull the rest of them out. Take a look at those. Okay, here's all four of them, the way they came out. Going from left to right, one, two, three, four. I know that's not the firing order of the cylinders, but uh, this is how they came out. They don't look all that bad. There's some oil on some of them, like a valve, like an oil tube seal was starting to begin to leak. But other than that, they look relatively good. You guys see that? So, it's always a good idea to replace these. He just bought the vehicle and doesn't know 
you know, when last time was service was done and I'd rather be safe than sorry. Picked up these Denzos, Platinum TT. She has her part number on them. Part number is PKH16TT. One thing I want to show you is that the way the box shows the spark plug, that's how they always put it in there. So you can always tell which one's top, which one's bottom. Boom, has this nice plastic protector on it, which you don't need anymore. There is a lot of fakes that are coming out of China for NGK and Denso spark plugs. But one way you can tell is if originals will always have this marking right here, Denso, Japan, DE, there'll always be markings. That's a very hard place to mark on. And uh, usually counterfeit people won't take the time to mark there. So if you get a set of spark plugs and it doesn't have markings there, most likely they're counterfeit. Okay, so one, one thing I'm gonna do I know I'm going to get hate. I always get hate for this. And guys like, you're an idiot, Bundy. What the heck are you doing? You stupid idiot. There's a coating on the spark plugs already. So why are you doing this? Well, I do this because I've seen spark plugs get stuck in heads. And I've had to take heads off on my own vehicles and on buddies' vehicles and customers' vehicles because they didn't do this correctly. I'm going to get some. I'm not going to slab it on there. I'm not going to put it on the electrode right here or anything like that. I'm going to put some anti-seize on the threads and then put it down into the spark plug hole. And I'm also gonna use, on the coil packs, I'm gonna use um, dielectric grease. So don't get your panties all in the wad because I'm putting anti-seize in there. You don't have to do it, I do it because I'm cautious like that. That's what I do, that's what I've done since I was nine years old. So don't hate me for putting dielectric grease on there, all right? I'm not gonna check the gap in old school times. When I first started being a mechanic, you used to have to come in here with a gapping tool you know, you'd grab it right here, you'd bend it a little bit, bend it back, get everything perfect. These come pre-gapped, so you don't need to mess with that at all. Here's the anti-seize that I use. It's a nickel-based anti-seize. Right there, nickel-based anti-seize. So this is what I use. Let me show you how I do this. So just get a little bit, a little dab will do ya. Just getting a tiny bit of grease right here, right? Just like that. Grab my spark plug. I'm gonna run it on the threads. I'm not gonna get anywhere near the tip. Just a light, thin coat of anti-seize. Like I said, I'm gonna get hate for this because I always do when I always show anybody how to do spark plugs on a vehicle. I'm giving you guys information to help you keep your vehicles running long and far and I still get hate so whatever haters gonna hate right <laughs> so that's all I do just a light little coat okay here's another trick my dad taught me get a six inch 3 8 hose take the spark plug take the spark plug put the spark plug into the hose you don't want to drop the spark plug right down into the, into the hole why because if it lands wrong hits the side you're gonna bend and change that gap on that spark plug so that's why I do this, to be careful and safe. I treat every car as though it's my own. So you just guide it down. You're gonna feel it when it actually connects. Okay, it bit, and then I run it down until my hose starts spinning, and you can feel it. There's no way to show you on this on, there's no way to show you on this on a video, but you will feel it when your hose starts to spin. Okay, yeah, it's all the way down. Hose is spinning. Pull it up and out. I'll repeat this step, the anti seize, using the hose for all remaining three spark plugs. Let me show you this real quick though. Okay, with new spark plugs, I've seen this happen twice in my career. Okay, so you get a spark plug, be that, doesn't matter if it's NGK, Denso, doesn't matter. What you're looking for before you leave, let's say you bought these at AutoZone or O'Reilly's, before you leave the store, inspect all your spark plugs be that four four bleh, be that four spark plugs or 10 spark plugs for a ford v10 right here let me get my knife out right here where the porcelain and the metal meet right here at this junction right there always check for cracks okay do yourself a favor make sure there are no cracks between the metal and the porcelain i've done that i've done it once i've seen it happen to another guy it was cracked right there it caused a misfire, a short to ground, causing a misfire. 
and you'd spend days and days, or I spent a day chasing it because I didn't think that the spark plug would be bad right out of the box. So always, always check and make sure your spark plugs are not faulty. All right, they, the manufacturers do make mistakes. They could get damaged in shipping. Just make sure the porcelain to metal part is not damaged. All right, so I have all the spark plugs back in, all four back in. All are tightened except for this number two one because I want to show you guys how to tighten this up. So there is a new crush washer on the spark plugs and um, that has to actually crush and you'll actually feel it crush. I wish I could show you this or have you feel how this works or have you feel this on YouTube, but it's just not possible. So I'm going to show you this instead. So I tighten the spark plug down with the, uh, with the uh, rubber tube, the 3 8 rubber tube as far as it would go. Okay. Now I have the 5 8 spark plug socket on there with a six inch, six inch extension and the three eighths ratchet right here. What I'm gonna do is I start at the 90 degree, or actually I'm gonna take this to a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna take this all the way down here. It's gonna go once, twice, and then it's gonna stop right about here. But I wanted to show you, and then you'll know it's tight. You'll actually feel the crush washer crush, and it'll stop it right about here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here, I'm on, okay. There's 190. 290s I'm gonna come and it's gonna end stop right about here you don't want to over tighten these because it will you can break these off down into the uh, head of the engine so do not do not do not over tighten this okay right there I felt it crush it's right about there so that's as far as you want to take it do not over tighten your spark plugs Okay, now let me get the uh, coil packs back in place. I actually set them up right here, the way I just took them out. So this one goes here, this one goes here. I'm gonna use my 3M silicone paste, dielectric grease. I'm gonna put it into the hole of the coil pack. Just get a little, little dab will do ya, right? Take the coil pack, stick it in there. Okay, this helps protect it. Uh, helps the voltage to the uh, spark plug and the uh, coil pack. And you put it back down in and repeat the step for all remaining three, right? So it's not that hard. Like I said earlier, I will put links in the description below to the tools and the chemicals I use. All these awesome gloves. These are the best gloves I've found. But uh, there you go, guys. If you have uh, you found this helpful if it has saved you money and being able to do the work yourself i'd really appreciate it if you subscribe i'll put a link to the uh, spark plug that i use as well everything everything will be down below so just look down there if you guys have more questions leave a comment if you need to and if you guys need to get a hold of me you guys can always reach me at bunnies garage at gmail.com